Welcome back for another episode of Martin James Designs. On this episode, we're going to be doing a custom derby cover, a two-tone powder coat with a logo in it. Going to get this primary cover installed, uh, some of the forward controls powder coated and put on, and we'll probably get to the exhaust too. So that's the plan on this episode. And um, yeah, we're going to keep plugging away. So uh, I'll show you what I got going on here. This is all going gloss black. So this is some of the hardware and bolts for the Ford controls and the front fender and rear um, tire axle. And then this is the Drag Specialties outer primary cover. I had to get a new one because the old one was pretty much unsalvageable. I don't think I can fix it. Um, so I'm going to be working on that. This I just sandblasted. It had a, an original color of a candy apple red on it. So I got it down to bare metal. We're going to be powder coating this a base black, putting a logo on it and then covering it white. So I'll show you guys how that process works. Um, yeah, so let's just quickly get these parts powder coated. And then we're going to work on this derby cover and get the primary cover powder coated and uh, get them installed on the bike. Specialties outer primary, new gasket seal, we're going to powder coat this matte black, the same color as all the engine components, so I'm going to get working on that. Before I powder coat this uh, brand new primary cover, as you can see, it's really shiny. I just used some goof off to get all of the, it had some stickers on it. And then I used some wax and degreaser and I'll use a tack cloth. Some people say you can't powder coat over chrome or you can. I find it's fine as long as it's extremely clean. And if it's old chrome, I at least scuff it up with some scotch bright a bare minimum if not i give it a little so it has something to uh, texture to something to stick to better um so i got my plugs in here because I, I i don't want to get uh powder in the the threads obviously um but i'm not worried about this piece because there's an actual gasket that sits on the derby cover so this can get powder coated and i sealed off the entire back so um this, that's why I'm not too concerned if the whole back of this gets powder coated because there's a seal that sits in that groove so it actually won't um, touch so it's going to seal off nicely. I scuffed this up with scotch Bright as well and waxed and degreased it so this should be ready to go. So I'm just going to let these parts uh, cure, cool down a little bit then I'm going to move on to matte black. Okay, we got all the parts powder coated, gloss black. That's for where the shroud's gonna go. Um, and then the Ford controls have been powder coated gloss black. All these bolts have been done, front fender bolts. Um, then this is matte black. So this is uh, all the engine components we did. So like the uh, cam covers and stuff. And uh, this is gonna go on the primary and we're gonna make a custom logo and powder coat it white and then remove the logo. So the logo will be black. I'll show you guys how I do that. And then the primary cover turned out awesome. Just gonna try to pull this off here.
plugged all the holes so the threads are good and then sealed all the back off with that high heat tape so we got a perfect gasket area for the new gaskets we're using so the next step i'll show you we're going to measure this primary cover so we're probably within we don't want it bigger than five inches from outside to outside. So what we're gonna do is I have my program set up here with the silhouette and this is my logo, the black sheep. So we have, we have six, so what do we got there? So that's five inches right there by 3.5. So I'm gonna make one like this, copy, paste and then i'm gonna make one a little bit bigger see how that fits and then uh, we'll see what one works the best so i'll get doing that Okay, before I stick this on, I need to ask you guys something. From Canada, where I'm from, this, you could call it a stencil, a sticker, whatever, that's fine. But we call them decals, like a decal. Now, if you noticed, I've been calling them decals and decals. Because in the States, you guys typically, typically call them decals. So in the comments, let me know what you guys think it is. Is it a decal or a decal? I really don't know. I'm used to saying decals, but I've been corrected a few times that it's a decal. And I've asked all my friends around here in Canada what they call it, and they all call it decals. So, um... Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think it is. Like, spell it the way you think it's pronounced. Anyways, let's get back to it. Okay, there's two things we have to watch for here. One of them is exactly what way this is going to sit because the bolts need to line up perfectly. So the primary cover, this is top. So we want the black sheep to go top. And I I think I might wanna go, like do it really big. So, well that looks pretty good actually. I think maybe I'll just, so this sits like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight either. Like I think it might look good like that, like, like this. Like somewhat on an angle there. This one works better, the smaller one I made. Okay, now we have the decal decal put on here. I'm gonna go around, not with the soft side, but the plastic side. I'm gonna go push everywhere around here because if any powder can seep between the logo and when we remove it, it, we, it will look blotchy. So I'm gonna make sure it's all sealed down really nice, go through it. Then the next step is to powder coat this white, put it in the oven just enough so it starts to melt. Then we pull it back out of the oven, remove these decals, and we'll see a black logo with white around it. It's gonna look pretty neat. So next step, let's get this thing cleaned off and uh, powder coat it white. This is the crucial part. If you wait too long and the powder starts to melt too much, it will bond to the, the vinyl and you won't be able to remove it. If you wait not long enough and you peel it off, it will actually take 
the powder with the vinyl and it will completely wreck it. So as soon as you start to see it flow out, keep an eye on it, you pull it out, let it cool down and then you remove it. So uh, let's just see how this goes. So well, this is what it should look like. Still hot. Slow it down. That's what it should look like. It just started to flow out. You can see the logo. That's just part of that high heat tape that's pulling up. It'd be fine. And uh, we're gonna let this cool down so we can touch it. Sometimes we have to use a heat gun to heat the vinyl up to remove it, but most of the times I can just pull it off with a uh, with a razor blade or a knife. So. Let's just give that maybe five minutes and we'll get it removed and then we'll put it back in the oven. Okay, we've let it dry to the touch. Okay, there we go. It's all cured and finished. That's exactly how you powder coat logos. You can also leave a, a logo on, like the actual vinyl and powder coat over it with a clear coat. Uh, but I just feel like doing it this way is a lot stronger and it looks better. Um, I got my new seal for the derby cover. Primary cover's all powder coated, have new gaskets. Got my Loctite ready to go. So we're just gonna blow all this off, lift the uh, bike lift up, and we're gonna get installing it all. Yeah, I always use my Dyna manual. It's like my Bible. So we're 16 to 19 foot pounds, which is about 200 inch pounds. So I'm gonna go and torque all of these outer primary bolts, and then we'll get to the derby cover. This is always the fun part, putting this on. Okay, there we are. All the bolts have been torqued to spec. And I know there's always been question about the bolts uh, peeling away or chipping. But I mean, I torqued those. There's not even a mark on them. It went pretty solid. Primary cover looks great. And here's the derby cover. So, like it literally worked amazing. It looks really good. No imperfections. It's gonna look good with just the white. You got the white kickstand here, the white rocker box splits in the horn cover, Harley Davidson logo. And then you got the white on the rims, grips. It's gonna look pretty good. Okay, we got the primary cover done, derby cover. Um, what's next? I think we can work on the Ford controls. So let's get to that. Okay, we're ready to go. Gonna do the Ford controls. Um, as you've seen, everything got powder coated. We, I just bought these uh, foot pegs off of like Amazon. So these are gonna work good for the actual foot pegs. But we were looking for something a little custom with the brake. So we had grinded off the original brake, drilled a hole through it, powder coated a bolt, and uh, removed the hardware from another shifter and we turn this into the brake pedal. So you'll see how that goes together. It's gonna look cool. And we also customized the shifter because I grabbed another um, shifter from a dirt bike. This is actually a foot peg from a dirt bike. 
and we're going to use that as the shifter and it's got little threads on it or studs so they're all going to look the same uh yeah so i'm going to start working on that got all my bolts powder coated here got my blue lock tight and uh let's get to it Okay, the last step is to put the shifter on. So because we custom made the brake with one of the foot pegs, there's obviously an extra one. And the shifter came with these, these uh, little pegs. Uh, but I, I wanna try to keep everything the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these ones off and put them on the shifter. And then that way everything will match. Front fender is fully installed. It's a little dirty though. Bolts powder coated look really good. And because we added the 21 inch rim, it's really nice and tight. Um, it should be perfect with that low profile. Uh, Ford controls worked out great. We made the custom uh, brake, rear brake, the motorcycle foot pegs and uh, Got the rear brake all adjusted. Um, you've seen the Black Sheep Derby cover. That turned out really good. And um, the dirt bike foot peg we made work for the shifter. Um, as well as the motorcycle peg. Everything else worked really good. So that's all done. All right, guys. That's it uh, for this episode. So the rear fender has been fully completed. I'm going to be starting the wiring on the lighting for the rear end and get the whole bike reassembled um, on the next episode. So the whole rear end will be completed, rear tire, I'll get the fender and everything in. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe, uh, like, leave a comment if you have any, and I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying the build. It's been a really fun for me. It's the best or the funnest build I've done yet. So anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch you on the next one.